Despite the trauma of its early years, during its recovery period, Weimar experienced a great surge in culture, in Berlin especially, that saw major developments in art. This expression of culture was greatly helped by the ending of censorship in the New Republic. The Kaiser, like Germany's future leader Hitler, believed in controlling the population using censorship, and after the First World War, with a new and lenient government, art flourished. Also, as people got richer in the Golden Age, art flourished even more, a movement known as Expressionism, which refers to art in where the image of reality is distorted in order to make it expressive of the artist's inner feeling or ideas was introduced. Expressionist artists often employed swirling, swaying and exaggeratedly executed brushstrokes, bold colours of their subjects. These techniques were meant to convey the turgid emotional state of the artist reacting to the anxieties and social criticisms of the modern world. These inner feelings in art were sometimes even tailored according to the artist's experiences because of the disparity in Germany after World War I. Many of these people were soldiers, medics, people who played a major role in the war. Otto Dix, a popular German artist, was one of these soldiers who used art to describe his experiences and feelings such as in his painting of the trench. He also depicted trauma and post-war despair using art. The traditional artwork done pre-war was quite different compared to the post-war. Before, the artworks depicted normal day-to-day -day life and landscapes. Battlefronts were documented, but only common collections of subjects were documented. For example, scenes of encampments, troops resting or carrying out everyday tasks Landscapes and views of named buildings and places with evidence of destruction were documented. However, very rarely were there images of trenches or any military action. Thus, in response to the unprecedented turmoil and trauma resulting from the war, many artists' reaction changed dramatically over a short period of time as fierce nationalism, enthusiasm for regalia and combat, and even optimism for a more democratic future frequently morphed into mournful reflection, feelings of loss and betrayal, pacifism, and rage directed not only at the institutions deemed responsible, but also at their own complicity. The tone of the art quickly changed from materialistic to anti-militaristic, with the spark of the First World War. Though most expressionists were in favor of the war in hopes it would create a new Germany they fought for, however, this was quickly changed. They'll keep fighting for years because they are getting something out of it. Many of them have become rich through the war, and there are still a lot that want to become rich. And those are the ones we had to be there for, and I'm sick and tired of it. Let them go to the trenches themselves, and not send us poor people in for them. November 3rd, 1916. Peter Hammerer, German trench soldier. It is worth mentioning that many of these artists not only express their own feelings, but other perspectives too. For example, George Gross, a German artist who served in the military for less than a year, from 1914 to 1915, expressed the impact of the war on different people using art. His painting, Grey Day, illustrates how the wealthy profited from the war, while the disabled and forgotten veteran was left poor and divided from the society. The two groups are divided by a brick wall to show the divide in, in the society. Gross also left it up to the reader to decide whether the wall is about to be torn down or built up. Otto Dix was one of the soldiers, as mentioned earlier, who used art to express his opinions as being someone who was actively involved in the war. 
Otto Dix was also a volunteer. He served four years as a machine gunner in the trenches of Flanders and Russia. This experience influenced his paintings for years after the war was over. Georg Grass was discharged from the army after a history of physical and psychiatric disorders. The Dada movement was a movement which attempted to use art as a political weapon against war and against the army. They were the voice of the public in Germany. Artists like Dix, Gross, and John Hartfield attempted to do this. Dada is political. The first Dada fair held in Berlin featured works by Dix, Hartfield, Gross, and Hetzfelder, which attacked the war and derided the military. There were slogans on the walls. Dada fights on the side of the revolutionary proletariat. Dada is political. The gallery was raided by the police. So were the Malik Verlag offices. Gross and Hetzfelder were arrested and charged with insulting the armed forces. Their political art magazine, Jedemann sein eigener Fußball, was banned after its first issue. They continued their attack on the military and the bourgeoisie with Die Pleiter and Der Gegner. Their collaborators included Rudolf Schlichter and Otto Dix. These artists and writers were united in their belief in art as a political weapon. Based at the Dresden Academy of Art, Dix soon began to move away from Dada towards a more socially critical form of realism. The Red Group of Communist Artists was formed in Berlin with Gross as chairman and Hartfield as secretary. The members included Fichter, Nagel, Dix and Otto Griebel. At the first Universal Art Exhibition in Moscow, there was a special section devoted to the work of the Red Group. The Malik Verlag was beginning to publish the novels of writers such as Maxim Gorky and Upton Sinclair, which featured the photo montage of John Hartfield and the drawings of George Gross. After his early involvement with Dada, Gross had begun to develop a more representational form of painting, which he called Verism. However, a lot of these artworks were also considered offensive to many traditional Germans. They heavily criticized the paintings as they encouraged and depicted nudity, romanticism, cabaret lifestyle. As stated by author Roy F. Allen, something only taken in moderate doses, in idiosyncrasies were not tolerated, and thus discussion of profoundly personal questions like religion or sexuality was taboo. Open sexuality, suppressed homosexuality, and the LGBTQ community had taken a rise in the art to state their rights and freedom. These elements shocked many viewers. The right-wing nationalists through, though thought modern art insulted German values. They looked on paintings showing the horrors of war and its vulgar and brutality as mocking German patriotism and militarism. The surrealist voices belonged to the Nazis. They saw modern art as degenerate and degrading a product of an intellectual elite who had lost touch with the German people. They thought its distorted images and forms show the artists were mentally ill. This also soon influenced the Nazi movement of the degenerate art. Many women's honor and pride was also degraded as well because most paintings focused on objectifying them in the simple role of working in brothels. Otto Dix depicted the writer Sylvia von Harding as an androgynous new woman, a then popular term for the modern sexually liberated woman. She seems vaguely menacing with her gesturing over large hands, lit cigarette and black, black rimmed monocle. Post emphasized the sharp angles of her head and body as she clashes with the traditional feminine curves. The women were not happy as Otto Dix and many artists exposed them and ugly felt them. Before the war, Art was extremely censored because of the Kaiser. After the war, the release of censorship gave artists more freedom, and war veterans and artists made the most of this, using art to describe their experiences, being a German. It also talked about the growing problems in the German society. The two movements of art during the time were the New Objectivity and the Dada movement. The Dada movement in introduced a form of art which questioned the so-called rules of in the society and questioned what art was really like. It questioned the rationality of art and what people perceived art as. Both Dada and the new movement, new, object, new objectivity, criticized war. However, 
Dada questioned the meaning of art and a new objectivity talked about the technicalities of art. To conclude, the 1920s was a progressive era for art where, as Dr. Ingrid Pfeiffer says, in spite of the negative social-political developments that the artists so succinctly described in their works, it was during the Weimar Republic that modernism, which continues to shape our life to this day, developed.